Welcome to the attic. Today's episode is going to be another one in the series of Elite Fix. With me today I have this beautiful vintage radio amplifier from, from Tonberg. It is a Cell Super 11 and it has some issues. Let's have a look and see if it will fix or if we have to dispose it. Come join me! I have now connected the radio amplifier to uh, the speakers and uh, to a FM antenna. What we're going to do is to check if anything working at all. Oh. It has sound. Uh, it has sound only on the right channel. What I can see from this uh, at this moment, uh, we need to fix the left channel. The right channel is maybe a little weak, so we're going to um, to adjust them so they are equal. We're going to check all these uh, these light bulbs. So let's crack it open and have a look. When you take off this top cover, do not slide it. Uh, just push it a little and you lift it. Because if you slide it, you might harm this uh, this antenna so let's have a look here what I usually do when I have when I, when I get a mute or partly mute amplifier from Tonberg in, the, in this kind of design I replace these output capacitors that is what I'm going to do first. I'm going to replace these capacitors. And to, to replace those, I have these. <laughs> As you can see, they are a lot smaller, and that is because the cap and the, everything in electronics has changed for, in 50 years. And one more thing this one is axial, and this one is radial. So I need to find a way how to use it. I can it like that by bending the, uh, the legs or I can lay it down and bend this uh, minus back so let's see what we do We need to desolder that one and that one. Well, there we go. I'm going to measure our plans to let's see if you can measure how they are working. Two point 37 milli farad, which is close. Yeah. 
as you can see yes that this one is auto range which means it's dead okay and then let's see is it possible yes we can do As you can see, it is room for it. And what I'm going to do, in addition to solder, I'm going to use some double-sided adhesive on the capacitor just to make sure it it hangs in. And also, it has some glue down here. I'm going to remove that one before we put this in. like that and then we wash it with isopropanol before before we mount this one and the positive going up there I'm going to do like that. I'm going to use the positive side of the capacitor to adjust the amplifier. double-sided tape and again positive there then we solder that one and we do the same there okay then we replace both of them and uh, then we do some soldering. There we go. And then we switch on and test. I don't put it together just yet because I'm not sure. I just, I was just pointing at uh, one component. It might be the reason it was not working on the left channel. So I replaced both of them, as you could see, and that is because they are the same producer, it is the same value, it is the same time it was placed in the radio, and it is just a matter of time before the other one just stopped working. So I replaced both of them.
So, okay. Let's switch on and see what happened. No. The left channel still not working. I just checked these uh, output transistors and uh, I noticed uh, it was something fun readings for that one, uh, the right channel and also for the one in the left channel. I have them here. Let's see if not. So I'm going to use this transistor tester to check. I was measured uh, before I take them out. I measure them with my with my multimeter. And I got some weird readings for for both those. So I take them out just to make sure uh, we do some decent testing. And that one seems okay. Oops. The test is like a capacitor, so obviously something wrong with this one. I have, uh, this one is 2N5490. I don't have that one in stock. But I have this BD911 and it says it is a equivalent. So we're going to test. It has the same pinout. E H F E uh, which is the amplifying it's 45 for this one it, it was 30 something for this one so it's okay and the VF is 600, uh, 6, 600 millivolt it's okay so yes we can use this transistor instead so then we put it back together again and uh, we test again I have been cleaning the surface on the transistors, the micos, and uh, and the heatsink with uh, with alcohol. And then I'm going to use thermal paste. use thermal paste when we're mounting transistors any active component on a heatsink and we always use thermal paste and then we use the mica to isolate the transistor from the heatsink And then a little more thermal paste. And then the moment of the root. <laughs> Am I? That one was tricky. Uh, 
Uh, turn on paste again. I almost forgot. There we go. Before I do any kind of test, just have to remember that it is a reason for the transistor to be uh, just stop working. And uh, it is really not any, well, the reason, uh, the chance for for a resistor to stop uh, stop working and be the reason for uh, for the uh, for the transistor to stop working. Well, I I have not experienced that yet, but for a shorted capacitor, it is. So what I'm going to do while I'm still at it, mostly because I can, I have the components, and it does not cost that much money. I'm going to replace all the capacitors in uh, in uh, in all the all the capacitors in the output amplifiers in at uh, something on I noticed when I was reading uh, the schematics is that on um, on the input of the power transistor, it is another transistor for each transistor. So what we're going to do is we're going to check where are they? They're there. Is the NPN and PNP. I'm going to show you how I'm checking these transistors. We're using uh, uh, the diode test. Like that. And then the base is in the, in the center for these transistors. And uh, well, that was a PNP, I guess. 0.6. Zero point six. That one is okay. Next one is NPN. Zero point six. Zero point six. Okay. And again, PNP. Zero point six. Zero point six. And NPN. Oi. Two volt. And zero point six. So that, that transistor is a bad transistor. So we're going to take that one out to test it with this one. And if it is dead, then we're going to find the replacement. Okay, let's test it. Unknown or damaged. Test again then. No. Oh. Okay. Then we're pretty sure. We're going, uh, then I need to, uh, to see if I have this one or any replacements. I 
I don't have this one you I don't have an equal uh, equivalent either or a replacement or whatever I have this one though it's a used one Now let's see if if it's working. Yes, it does. Great. Like that. Do we have? more transistors in that way no we don't okay and then the mission will be if you can see up in here the mission now is to replace these capacitors um, that one that one that one yeah and also do the same on the right channel so let's see what I have been doing uh, I have been replacing that transistor, that transistor, and the capacitors, this, 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 and these three, I have been replaced. So let's connect it to uh, to some uh, uh, to some power and uh, power it up and check if it is working now. Have we got the turntable? Let's power up and again and check for no switch on. Yes, it works. So what we have been doing is we have been replaced that transistor and that transistor which we have here. These two have been replaced and these capacitors in the signal way in the output amplifier. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to uh, increase the uh, the input voltage for uh, for the transformer. As for this moment, it is set for 220 volts. Here in Norway, we have 230, so I'm going to put that one over to 240 instead. And after I have done that, then I'm going to uh, to adjust the correct volt, uh, voltage and current to the amplifier and then after that going to give it a decent clean Then I'm going to these potentiometers, those two and those two are going to clean up, sorry, going to clean up a little. And to do that, I'm using this 
I'm using this PRF 7778. And then we do some adjustments. The first thing we're going to do well, we connect a negative to ground. The first thing we're going to do is to measure the center voltage for the channels and that is to be the positive side of the capacitor like that. It's going to be volt DC. Do you see anything? Yeah, you see like that. And that one is to su is supposed to be 17.7 volts, and we adjust it for uh, on that input there. 17. Close enough, and go from there to the right channel, and you do the same. And that is that trim and seventeen. Close enough, and then we go from voltage to millivolt because now we are going to uh, to check the quiescent current for the channels and uh, I'm going to measure over that Come on. There, okay. And that one is supposed to be 15 millivolts. And that one we adjust. There, 15 millivolts. Too high. 13 close enough and next oh, let's go and there's the trim Yep. There we go. Back to the question from the beginning of this video. If it would fix. Yes, it would fix. It was a little more complicated than uh, I first thought. As uh, you remember, we had to, uh, we were replacing the output capacitors one of them were shorted um, it was two transistors and I choose to, uh, to replace all the capacitors in in the power amplifier now it's playing great it looks great as well I've been uh, been cleaning it giving the wooden details some uh, some Chinese wood, uh, wooden oil 
and it really shines. So as you probably know, this episode is very close to its end. It is a couple of things we have to do. Me, I have to thank you for watching and for your support. And you, down there, it is both for you who have been watching for a while and the new ones. Of, uh, and the new ones. These like and subscribe buttons. Click them. It's free. And it will maybe benefit me one day. So until next time, bye.